Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Trusted Tech Presents, the Microsoft Playbook. Today, we're talking to Anton Reagan about Copilot, which I feel like we're talking about every day. So it's just another day of talking about Copilot. Uh, and we're going to jump into the top questions that customers are asking since, Anton, this is what you're doing every day. You're talking to people about Copilot. Every day. Multiple times a day. <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day, except with Copilot. First off, I think like the biggest question that uh, procurement managers or IT folks are asking when they're getting into the thing is, is it worth it? How do you build the business case for $30 per user per month, uh, roughly? Uh, you know, Satya has not given this thing away for free. So how, how does somebody get started taking a look at that and sort of like justifying it from a business case? Yeah, yeah. Um, talking about, you know, the ROI on a $30 license is something that those are the conversations we're having every day. Um, more and more, we're, we're really faced with this problem of digital debt. Um, all digital debt is, is, you know, how the influx of things like emails, meetings, Teams notifications, other chats, how they're really outpacing our ability to effectively work through and process it all. Um, and in fact, I think something about 68% of uh, workers just, they report that they don't have enough uh, uninterrupted focus time throughout their day. So uh, why Copilot matters is it helps users um, automate a lot of their you know, repetitive tasks uh, to focus on more meaningful and impactful responsibilities. Um, a Forrester study showed that, uh, you know, uh, workers who adopt Copilot on average will save about eight, uh, eight hours a month or 96 hours per year when they leverage Copilot properly. So if you take, just as an example, a, a worker who saves 96 hours a year, that's 96 hours they're given back to focus on other things, and assume that worker is paid something like a $30 an hour wage, what a company is gonna realize is a return on that license of about $3,000 a year. So a $360 license versus a $3,000 return, um, you know, that's just like the tangible, the tangible ROI, not to, to mention other benefits like projects being completed faster, reports just needing fewer revisions. Uh, there's a lot of value there. Yeah, that's two and a half weeks. I would definitely pay $360 for two and a half weeks of free time. I'd pay that all day and twice on Sundays. I think I'd pay more than $360 for two and a half weeks. Yeah, for sure. Well, so that case should be relatively easy. So, okay. So Forrester slash Anton have made a good case for me. Um, I've decided to move forward with this project. I'm going to push Copilot in my, my organization. Maybe I'm just going to test it out with a particular group or, um, you know, maybe I want to go the whole, the whole deal and get it to everybody. I, obviously that's a, that's a huge lift. How do I, how do I start to get that move and how do I roll that, that ball downhill? So the most important part of adopting Copilot for an organization who thinks they might want to move forward uh, comes before you even have the license. And that is through uh, running something called a Copilot readiness assessment. Uh, the reason in assessment is critical for an organization looking to use Copilot is because it will help you uh, really understand any gaps in your environment security posture and really understand uh, the importance of your, your organization's data governance policies. Um, running an assessment will really require you to take a deep dive into your Entre ID environment, looking at your, your group policies. It will require you to, to dive into your admin centers across Exchange, Teams, and Outlook. You really need a comprehensive understanding of where the opportunities are to improve your security before you even begin to leverage Copilot. So that would be step one, running the assessment. Now. Assuming that you've taken a look at your security environment, you've patched any gaps, you've really tightened your, your conditional access through Entre-ID and you're ready to dive in. Now you don't need to go ahead and you know, send a Copilot license to hundreds or thousands of employees in your environment. We really just recommend uh, beginning with more or less a pilot for 365 Copilot. So this means picking one or two departments internally that you've identified as high value use cases um, that you're going to begin Copilot with. So typically what we'll see is the first two departments to adopt Copilot will be IT, right? Because they need to also be in the environment testing things to see how they work. And C-suite. C-suite has a huge influx of notifications, emails, meetings, reports, you name it. 
and they're gonna see a lot of value in working through that digital backlog by leveraging Copilot properly. So as a part of this pilot program, when you've selected your one or two departments that are really gonna begin with Copilot, it's also important to make, uh, to make sure you have an adoption strategy in place for those users, um, complete with things like end user training, uh, documentation that users can reference to really make sure that they're, they're getting the most value out of their Copilot license as possible. So you've run the assessment, maybe you've successfully completed a, a pilot program. Step three would be slowly phasing out Copilot to other departments. Things like sales, HR, and legal. Pretty much any user that spends a majority of their day at their computer or behind a screen, those are the groups that are gonna benefit most from Copilot. You talked a little bit about that readiness assessment, which I, you know makes all the sense in the world taking sort of a conservative approach. What are the risks that I need to be aware of that I assume will crop up during that readiness assessment? Uh, Copilot's an amazing tool, but it isn't without risk. And a lot of the risk, like I said, really lies in making sure your environment's ready for Copilot to begin with. Part of what makes Copilot so powerful is it's able to draw from so many sources of data in your environment to help you work through your backlog quicker. But the other side of that is you don't want uh, certain users in your environment to be able to access all of your company's documentation, right? As an example, you may not want someone in customer service to be able to manipulate Copilot to access company financials that may be classified, right? That's like a big example of the need to run an assessment to mitigate those risks, making sure your data is quarantined properly so that if someone in customer service or sales says, hey, Copilot, can you pull financials from this quarter? Copilot won't, won't comply with that. Do these assessments provide recommendations on training, both for me from an implementation standpoint, as well as uh, for my personnel? What, I guess, what does Microsoft provide? What does Trusted Tech provide that can, that can help? When it comes to dealing with Microsoft directly, kind of like anything else, there will be documentation out there through Microsoft Learn and a handful of other resources that you'll find on the, the Microsoft website. But I would say, I would caution someone, unless they're really familiar with Copilot as a tool, to kind of uh, embark on that endeavor on their own. Um, it's There's a lot of value in bringing a partner into the mix. So Trusted Tech, like we mentioned earlier, we, we talk with organizations every day who are either looking at assessing Copilot or maybe they've already started uh, to use Copilot and then they took a step back and realized, hey, there's a lot more to this than we thought. We need some extra help. So the way that Trusted Tech has partnered with and provided value to, uh, to organizations looking to adopt Copilot is in many capacities. First and foremost, we will help organizations run readiness assessments. What's included in something like a Copilot assessment is we'll take a deep dive into your environment, we'll help you identify gaps in your, in your security posture, and we'll provide guidance and recommendations and best practices on how to improve your security prior to even getting your Copilot license. Um, you know, another way that we provide value to organizations looking to adopt Copilot is through end user training, right? Helping uh, sh make sure that your, your users in the environment are familiar with Copilot and what it can do, providing documentation that they can reference throughout their day if, if they need a little refresher on what the capabilities are. Um, but the reason it's important to, to train end users up properly is because you're gonna wanna realize the maximum amount of ROI. And the best way to do that is to make sure that your power users know exactly what they're doing so that they can use the tool effectively. And then lastly, of course, we will help organizations uh, by building out a, a, a long-term kind of sustainable roadmap for, for AI adoption. Just making sure that your company's AI adoption journey is done responsibly, is paced out well, um, to really make sure that you're, you're receiving the full value out of your Copilot experience. So Anton, like we mentioned the, at the jump, you're, you're having these conversations every day with customers. You're having probably these conversations very frequently directly with Microsoft. If you had a crystal ball and you were looking at the next couple of years of Copilot and what Copilot is going to enable us to do, what are you hearing? What's like the, what is the next thing on the forefront for Copilot? That's a great question. Um, 
Obviously, we're in the, the earlier days of Copilot. It's only been around for a few years and organizations are still even exploring what it can do for them. I think probably in the next three to five years is when we'll see widespread adoption and companies will will have already begin to realize kind of the ROI on on what their 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 copilot spend is. Most of what I'm seeing right now are companies in the early stages. Uh, they're they're in the, the piloting phase where IT and C suite are are exploring copilot. I have a feeling very soon sales, customer service, HR, legal, they will have already adopted it. And uh, and I guess I don't know what the next step would be from there, Tipper. <laughs> um, but thank you for the answers today. I appreciate your time, Anton. And thank you for joining us on Trusted Tech Presents the Microsoft Playbook. We'll catch you next time.